Hi, this is Jerry, and uh, I'm getting ready to make another little mod here I think that you're going to find interesting. For those of us who have to work out on the road, uh, for me especially, I'm a, a web designer and a digital marketer. Aside from having fun with the I Love RV Life uh, channel, I have a business called Resolve Video. If you ever go to my website, you can click on it and see the type of things that we do. We make websites and email campaigns and that type of stuff. Not a commercial, just kind of giving you a background of what we do for a living. And um, the good thing about this business uh, for us is that it's very, very portable. And I've got clients all over the area, and we get to hook the camper up and, you know, drag the thing around and go visit some of these folks from time to time. And, you know, I might work a day uh, or work an evening, uh, work a morning so that we can fit some fun time in between those uh, while we're out and traveling. That's having this type of business. Um, that this is one of the things that makes it so exciting is that I can haul this around uh, in, in the RV. I've talked to other folks that I've met out on the road. We've met medical billing people, uh, call center, uh, programmers, app developers, so many other people who use their camper um, and work inside of it, and work so many hours a week or a day, and then you know then enjoy hiking and mountain climbing and you know playing at the beach and all those types of things. So it works out great. The bottom line is time is very valuable to me for, for two reasons. One, uh, when I do something called fixed fee work, time is money. I will do X amount of work for a client for so many dollars. And you know, regardless of whether it takes me 15 minutes or 15 hours, I only get paid for that piece of work. So I'm always looking for applications and technology that can make my work much, much faster. Um, I think uh, there's another video uh, where I show how I use the Mobley or use certain internet devices and things like that because I need very high speed internet to move large volumes of video or graphics or text files or PDFs or you know whatever I'm working on to be able to move those up and down from the cloud. So that being said, there's also this physical element of where you're sitting here and you've got so much screen real estate. Well, I had this beautiful 32 inch monitor, beautiful 32 inch monitor, and it just died. And I spent a lot of money for it. Um, and just the vibration, I think, of the camper and everything else just eventually killed it. So I've decided no more, no more spending that kind of money for that kind of monitor. It's just, um, it's just not a good investment. But what I have found is that I can buy nice 27 inch monitors at a very reasonable price, you know, somewhere between $150 and $200. Um, even some nice ones that I can do video editing in the $225 to $250 mark that have good color on them and I can do color correction and things like that on photographs and videos and those types of things. Very important in my business. But again, 27 inches of real estate. I know I'm sounding kind of you know wimpy here for a web developer or, or for a video editor and you've got five or six different applications. Time is money. I need to be able to move between this tile and this tile very, very quickly. I need two monitors. And the setup that I have here you know, it's just about enough room for one good monitor. Um, but what I really want to be able to do is put some type of a device, and I've been looking high and low for these things, to where I can actually mount two monitors and then leave them as we travel so I don't have to go through all this setup. So I have found a unit that I'm going to experiment with. I'm going to open in the box. You're going to step through this with me. And I have a big metal plate that I'll show you back here that I'm going to drill holes in, and I'm going to run some bolts, and we're going to see if we can make this thing stick and stay. And with, a, I think, a little bit of effort here, we're going to end up with a very, very good application. And we're going to see if we can get these two monitors in here. And if I can get two monitors in here, I think I can shorten a lot of my development time down by substantial percentages. So anyway, that's my workflow, and I don't want to bore you with any more of that. So let's see what it's going to take for us to be able to put two monitors in here. And then I'll show you. You've seen these devices probably in offices, and you may even have one in your homes if you're, if you're at home. Or had some experience with this but for those of us who work and those of us who need uh, email programs up and file managers and access to the web and Photoshop and Adobe Premiere and la 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 the list just goes on and on and on we're really managing that with a very high-end computer um, and uh, we want this screen space so let's see what we can do to make this happen okay so I'm gonna grab the box here we're gonna open it up and we can see what we can make happen okay so here's the box uh, we'll go ahead and open this up I ordered this off of Amazon I will put a link down in the show notes uh, the description on where I got this we're still gonna make the assumption that it works <laughs> so uh, again uh, you're gonna experience this with me so let's go ahead and open up this bad boy and uh, you know just take the parts out and see what we're gonna have here I don't 
you know, I, I, I saw the directions. Um, can you see that? Does that make sense? That's the kind of device it's going to be. I'm sorry there's a little bit of a glare, you know, where you can put the two monitors side by side. This has a little crank down at the bottom and a flat space. I'm not going to be able to use the, the, the clamp and you'll see more about that later. Let's go ahead and get all these parts out. And I will share this with you. This thing must be heavy duty. I, I didn't pay a lot for it. I want to say it was around $35, something like that. So, um, Again, you know, if it works and it lasts for a couple years, that's great. If it breaks and, you know, I can, at least I know the concept works. So I'm going to assume these are the two end pieces and I'll move the camera back around in a little bit. Um, this looks like the upward post, which is a necessary thing. Uh, this model is called a Vivo. Now here's where we're going to have to get creative. This is the thing that goes on there. And I am going to really have to figure out how I am going to mount this thing in there because I don't have any lip. And uh, we're just going to have to get really creative on how we're going to make this thing work. I'm not sure. And I've got a feeling this is all the little pieces of hardware. So here's my Okay, here's the, the T piece that goes on the main shaft that goes up and down. Not a lot to it. I have no idea what that is. Uh, this, these are my monitor brackets that, that each monitor will go to, and I've got two of those, two identical ones of those. Oh, look at here. That's exactly what I want. Home run. Oh wow, this is going to be awesome. I'm not going to have to get the hacksaw out. Is that great or what? So somebody else has already had this challenge. So again, if you've got, you know, on the back of your dinette or desk or whatever you're using, if you've got something that you can take this guy and screw, you know, screw it in and hold it here and then put the top in, you've got a home run. Unfortunately, I've got a big metal box back here. I'm not going to have that I'm not going to have that uh, fortunate type of an environment. I wish I did. That would be absolutely perfect. But this is awesome. What they did include was this flat plate. Can you see that? Yeah, it's a flat plate. I'll try to get the light on it with two slots for screws and also a place in the middle. So there's a chance here. Yep, there's a chance here. I'm going to be able to put this back in the back, drill two holes, run me some bolts in have me a nice mounting to be able to do that. Uh, in the project world, we call that a home run. <laughs> so uh, I'm excited about that. All right, let me turn the camera around and then we'll start looking at how we can get the installation set up, okay? So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put the camera back here so you can kind of see where I'm gonna be working in this specific area here. And then I'll give you some snapshots on what I'm gonna try to do. So the next thing that I wanna be able to show you is how I'm gonna put this plate and then we'll mark some holes and then, you know, depending on how this is going to work out, either this works and the whole project stays together. If this one little device here doesn't work, everything just goes kafizzle. So let's see what it is. Let me show you back here in the back where I'm going to be mounting that. I think that's going to be kind of helpful. So this again is where it's uh, very, very critical. As you look back here, you can kind of see the light kind of lighting that up through the window. And I am going to be mounting this device as such. And um, I'm either going to mount it this way or put the screws back here in the back. It just depends on how much room I have. It, I don't think it really matters as long as I get it bolted down tight. And then this post here will screw inside of that. And um, the key is going to be getting a good, super, super solid mount. I'll, again, I'll try to get a close-up to this. There you go. A good solid mounting there. And if that works, then home run. Uh, this project takes just minutes, okay? This project is going to take the really the basic of hand tools. Um, it's going to require, I'm going to use a cordless drill. It could be electric with a, a couple drill bits. Um, I'm going to need a hammer. I'll show you how to use that. A couple wrenches to tighten some things up and, you know, a marker to be able to mark my holes. It's pretty basic. I did go, the, the, I noticed the package, and I happen to have some of these down in my um, tool bin down below. Um, these are, uh, if you can see them, they're little quarter inch uh, hex head bolts. 
and uh, this is what they call a lock washer and inside this washer is a little um, it's like a plastic grip that once I tighten these two things together it kind of helps lock it together it's not a permanent thing but um, it with all the vibration and everything I'm gonna need all the help I can get to keep this thing from vibrating loose so I'm gonna move the camera over here uh, the first thing that we've got to do is mark the holes for this guy and I'm gonna be putting uh, three I'm gonna attempt to put three screws in here I'm gonna put one here in each one of these slots and then I'm gonna put one here in the middle. I'm probably gonna put the middle one first. Um, that way I don't have to worry about uh, if something was to get kind of sideways on me, I'll know that I'll always be marking these. And, uh, and I'll show you that. I'll move the camera over and you can see me mark it. Again, I crawled up underneath the table. I looked at the middle bracket. I see where I've got the most amount of space to be able to uh, have the greatest opportunity to be able to get these screws in here. And then um, we'll put those in and then after that it's a home run we just rock and roll and put this thing together so let me move the camera here and I'll show you how we do this so again what I have done is I have gone up underneath this metal piece here where this desk fits and uh, determined exactly you know do I have enough space to be able to you know is there there's some metal supports that run on each angle to keep this rigid and will I be able to put screws in here and hold this in place? And the answer is yes. Um, that's, that's very, very critical. So I'm going to roughly center this guy. And the first thing that I'm going to do is put a hole right here in the middle. I'm going to drill that guy right there. And uh, we will get this guy drilled out. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a punch this is a little simple punch there, just a dollar or two at your hardware store. And I'm going to go here and I'm going to tap that thing and kind of put me a little spot here to get the drill started. And I'm going to start off with a small drill bit and then we will graduate up to a larger one. So let's see how this is going to work here. What I'm very pleased to find here is that this, uh, this steel is very thick. This is not just a piece of thin sheet metal. This is a very, very substantial bracket to hold this table in place, and I'm quite thrilled about that. So I'm going to step up to a quarter inch bolt now. So there we go. We'll get the vacuum cleaner and clean this up in a little bit. We'll see if this screw will go in here. I may have to walk. No, it's perfect. All right. So uh, that's the easy part. Now, this is where you wish you had two hands. Uh, I wish Joan was here, but Joan is out doing other things today. And we are going to put this guy right in here like so. Perfect. Right like so. Perfect. And I'm going to drop that guy in there like that. If you can see that. I'll say. Okay, so we've put that we put that first bolt in here. I would say the chances are I wouldn't even have to put these other two bolts in here. And to be real honest. My concern though is that this, you know, this is going to be sitting inside here like so, screwed in. And what I don't want to have happen is, you know, stress or movement of these two monitors. Even though they're LED monitors, they're not that heavy, but moving over time and eventually shearing that belt off. And then we get to our next destination and find our two monitors busted all over the floor. So, you know, it's cheap insurance. It's a pain to drill two more little holes right here, but we'll go ahead and take care of that. And then, um, you know, and for 10 cents a bolt, uh, who can uh, complain over uh, 10 or 20 cents worth of insurance? So let's, um, let's just go ahead and do that. And, um, you know, it's not like I've got to save the world today. So it's no big deal, really and truly. So I'm going to tap my two little starter places so my bit doesn't wander all over the place.
and let's drill let's drill two holes. There's one. It has become a bear to drill, but that's that's really 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 to my advantage because the stiffer this steel is and the thicker it is I don't know maybe an eighth or so the uh, higher chances that this thing's gonna stay in place <laughs> very good what I'll also use I call these a nickel washer um, they're about the size of a nickel and uh, I will put that through there like that and then add this to the top and it will give me just a that slight a minute bit of extra surface value on top of this bracket uh, to give me a you know a little bit more surety that this thing is going to stay in place so let's go ahead and mount this next one Okay, I have a tiny set of set screws here that I'm going to back off a little bit and get them out of the get them out of the threads here, and um, then maybe this thing will screw in, and then we lock this guy in place. You know, this is again, this thing was right at around it was under forty dollars. I'm um, it's a pretty nice unit so far, at least. Looks well constructed. And I think the more prep I do now and making sure everything is super tight, uh, the better we'll be. So that post is like in there, boys and girls, let me tell you. That thing's not going anywhere. All right. I'm going to go ahead and take this ring and drop it over the top here so I don't forget it later. This is the... Uh, the next step is to take this guy here. We're going to take this loose now, and I'll, I'm going to do this in kind of bits and pieces, um, just for editing reasons, so I don't drag you through this. But this has got four. This has got. Uh, you see here, it's got four screws, and then this piece has two screw holes in it. I'll kind of rotate it so you can kind of see that, right? And that's going to go inside here and hold that in place. So let's uh, let's see how quick I can get through this. So this unit is going to go like so, if you look at that. And then this, I don't know if you can make it out. Can you see this has got a slight bow in it? So you want that bow to come toward you. So that is the way that's going to work. see how this is coming together here. Not a whole lot to it. There we go. All the holes work up, line up perfectly as you would hope that they would. I don't think that's going to go anywhere. Well, this thing is really heavy duty. I am quite surprised. It did have good Amazon ratings. I'm pleased with that. Okay. So I noticed that these brackets here have both left and up and down play. That's really good. I'm going to go ahead and slip these on here like so. We'll loosen these up as much as possible to give me as much play without the screw completely coming out. There we go. And I'm going to put these guys, it doesn't look like there's a much of a top or a bottom to these. There's no arrows. All right, it says made in China at the bottom. I'll at least show that. Okay, there's that one. There's that one. I do have an end cap here, which is kind of nice. It goes on there just to dress these up a tad. Get that out. And a, a 
small little set screw that goes inside here. I'll put this one on as well. Let's see if I can slide this guy on. And I'm just going to finger tighten him now because I don't know what I'm going to need for my monitors. Okay. I also have some cable management here. It's going to do something like this, which is really nice. Okay, there's my cable management, and then I also I'm going to have some cable management down here, but that'll be one of the last things that I put on. I'll get that a little bit later. I also have um, an end cap that goes in there like so, it dresses that up. Looks nice. Go ahead and take care of that. All right, let's go get a monitor. One of the nice things about this kit is they give us some screws to go ahead and be able to use in these mountings right here. So that's very, very helpful. I'm going to use actually utilize these slots and then the ones down at the bottom. And uh, just to hang, just to get it, just to get it started. This is where I don't use an electric drill. Definitely use a screwdriver with these and pull them snug. Don't over tighten them. You'll, you'll strip them out of your monitor. Doesn't take much. Pull these guys in place. Now these little LED monitors, maybe two or three pounds, not hardly anything at all. Monitor number one. Let's go get the other one. Now, one of the things you may notice, <clears throat> yep, I am leaving the bottom of the monitor on here. And I know you, that, that may be seeming crazy at this point and, and literally counterproductive for the whole reason for this configuration of being able to, um, you know, have these dual monitors and remove the stand. But again, my objective here is to keep these monitors in place as I go down the road. And, and I'll just share with you, uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm hoping this holds up. Uh, what I will do is slide these down. And what I'll end up having is this device here is going to be my fixture that holds everything in place. And then these will still rest on the base of the table. And because there's gonna be movement up and down uh, in, the, in the camper as we go down the road. I mean, there's just no way around it. Uh, you hit these uneven bridges and um, you know and, and such and um, you just uh, you just cannot control literally that violent that violent movement that you experience now I know those of you who have motorhomes out there with airbag assemblies and things like that uh, over the wheels and you especially those with tag axles and things like that you don't quite have it as bad. Um, some of your class C's are, you know, not not known to be quite as bouncy, although it can be, you know. But in a fifth wheel, unless you've got one of these expensive Moride axle systems, and that's really a video for another time, then you're just going to have some bounce in the back end. Now, I, I am going to show you some things I've done to help alleviate that in another video here very soon. But still, you're just going to have movement. You just can't help it. So I am going to leave the feet on here for now. And we're going to see how this behaves over time. But I, I just don't think this will hold everything in place. Not with just the violence that occurs in the, out on these highways. I mean, you hit these bridges or you get into a construction zone. 
and I mean even in the ton truck it will beat your kidneys out of you so look at that okay we're gonna do that I'm gonna start easing that down so that we get a nice nice fit here we're getting there take a few minutes here to tighten everything up and adjust it and get everything where it should be. I'm also going to leave a little bit of a gap in here uh, again just to be able to handle some of this activity that's going to be going on over time. So there you have it this is my dual monitor project inside my RV to be able to make my workspace so, so much more flexible and just expedient in being able to do workflow. I hope you'll try it. Let me share this with you. I think the bracket, and I'll put it in the notes below on where you can buy it if you're looking for something like this. It'll handle these. These are 23 inch, 24 inch monitors. I think they'll handle up to a 27 if you're looking at doing something like this. I think I got this thing for around 40 bucks. Um, but I will put it in there and the prices are going to change in Amazon up and down as these things become available. Very heavy divvy unit, uh, multiple options to be able to mount it which was absolutely perfect. I did not know that when I picked the unit out. It didn't show that uh, in the diagram. It really turned out far, far, far better than what I thought. So I can work quicker now. Isn't that great? And uh, you know what that does? It just helps me love RV life. See you soon.